Hey guys, I'm gonna explain what variables are. A variable you probably remember from middle school math class. A variable is a representation of some number or value. There are two steps to creating and using a variable, declaration and assignment. We'll begin with declaration. To declare a variable, we need to list the data type of what we're storing exactly. In programming, you can store more than just numbers. You can store characters, even whole sentences, etc. Let's work with whole numbers. To store a whole number, we will type int for integer. Then we need a unique identifier for this variable. For now, let's just say x. We're used to working with like x and y in math class, right? We will end the statement with a semicolon. This step is declaration. Now to assign a variable, you take the variable's name, that unique identifier, then we will set this equal to some number. Since we declared this variable as an int, it will store an integer, maybe like five. Now this variable behaves as if it was the value that it contains. It will behave as if it was the number five. Then to display a variable, we can use standard output. STD, C out, we will display X. And let's see what we have. There's our value, five. This first step is declaration. The second step is assignment. The nice thing about doing this in two steps is that you can later assign your variable a value. If you know what value you would like to give your variable right away, you can do that at the beginning of your program. You could combine both of those steps. Int x equals five. And that would do the same thing. In cases where you don't know what value you would like to give a variable, you could assign it later, such as when you accept user input. You don't know what the user is gonna type. So let's create another int y equals six. Then let's display whatever y is. I'll add a new line. Let's copy this, paste it. Okay, x is five, y is six. We could even do something like this. Let's say int sum equals x plus y. Then we'll display whatever our sum variable is. C out sum. The sum of x plus y is 11. Now there's different data types depending on what you need to store within a variable exactly. The int data type stores a whole integer. Let's think of a few examples of whole integers. What about an age? That's typically a whole number. Int age equals 21. Let's think of two more examples. What about a year? Int year equals 2023. How about days? Int days equals seven. The int data type can only store a whole number. With days, what if we assign this a value of 7.5? Let me show you what happens. All right, I will display days. All right, that decimal portion is truncated. When I display days and we attempt to assign 7.5, well, this variable can't store that decimal, so it's truncated. If you need a number that includes a decimal portion, there's a different data type for that. And that is a double. This is a number including decimal. A few examples of a double would be maybe a price. There's dollars and cents. Double price equals $10.99. What about a GPA, a grade point average? That includes a decimal. Double GPA equals 2.5. Uh, then maybe a temperature. Double temperature equals 25.1. I guess this could be in either Celsius or Fahrenheit. Then let's display maybe price. Price. Yeah, and that decimal portion is not truncated, much like what you see with whole integers. If you need a number that includes a decimal portion, use a double. Now we have the char data type. That stores a single character. Type char. Maybe we're working with student grades. I'll name this variable grade. Equals. Then to store a single character, you use single quotes. This student has an A. Two more examples. What about an initial? Singular, not initials. Char 
initial. Uh, what about B? So I'm going to display initial. Initial. Okay. We have our single character of B. Now check this out. What if I attempt to store more than one character? I'll add C. We have a warning. We have an overflow in conversion from int to char. So what's displayed is the last character, just C. So chars can only store a single character. Here's one more example of a char data type. What if we're working with currency? What type of currency will we work with? Char currency equals maybe a dollar sign. If we're working with a different type of currency, we could change this to a different symbol. Yeah, that's the char data type. It stores a single character. Next on our list is booleans. Boolean. A variable that's boolean has only two states, true or false. To create a boolean variable, you type bool, then a variable name. So these are applicable to anything that has two states. What if somebody is a student? They're either a student or not a student. Bool student equals true. If they're not enrolled in classes or they graduated, you could set this to be false. Think of a light switch. The light switch can either be on or off. You could say a light switch is boolean. There's only two states, true or false. How about bool power? Is something powered on or not? Power equals true. If it's turned off, that could be false. Maybe we have a store and we need to mark if something is for sale or not. Like, is it available? Bool for sale equals true. If an item in our store isn't for sale, like it's not available, we could set this to be false. So that's the idea behind Boolean values. It has two states, true or false. The last data type I'll cover is strings. A string is technically an object that represents a sequence of text. Think of it as the char data type, but we can store more than one character, even whole sentences, like a name or an address. Strings are provided from the standard namespace. To declare a string, we would type standard string, then a variable name. What about just name, like we're storing a user's name? Place your text within a set of double quotes. Then why don't you type your first name? Then we will store that within this variable name. Then to test it, let's display it. Standard output, we will display name. And there is your first name. Let's create a couple more examples. What about a day of the week? Standard string day. Then pick a day. I like Friday. What about food? Standard string food. I like pizza. I'll store this series of text as a string. Then maybe an address. Standard string address equals make up some address 123 fake street basically speaking a string is a type of object that represents a sequence of text such as a name a day an address etc now i'm going to show you how we can display a variable along with some text i would like to display hello then whatever your name is i will type what is known as a string literal we're literally printing a string Hello. Follow this string of text with a variable. My variable name is good. Then let's display it. Hello, then whatever your first name is. But you do have to pay attention to spacing. After my word hello, I'm going to add a space. There. Hello, bro. Then let's display our age. So I'm going to add a new line character. Standard output, we will display you are age years old. There, hello bro, you are 21 years old. Uh, make sure to pay attention to the spacing as well because it's easy to mess that up. All right, so those are variables. 
We covered a few of the basic data types, but there's more advanced data types once we gain a little bit more experience with this that I'll cover. We have integers, which store a whole number, doubles, which are numbers that include a decimal portion, chars are single characters, booleans are either true or false, then strings represent a sequence of text. An important note with strings is that you can include numbers, but they're treated differently. So yeah, those are variables in C++. Your assignment is to, in the comments section, post a integer variable, a double, a character, boolean, and a string. Think of some examples. Preferably some examples that I may have not covered already. That would be good practice. Well, yeah, and that's an introduction to variables in C++.